Hey folks, uh, Brian Hollock here. I'm, I'm uh, joined by Don Stallnecker, and uh, I've had the pleasure of, of uh, uh, both taking classes uh, 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 from Don and, and uh, also training with Don for a number of years. Um, Don's a uh, instructor with Firearms Academy of Seattle. Uh, he's also collaborated with us, and I've seen him assist uh, many world-class firearms instructors. Uh, Today we're here at the Firearms Academy of Seattle uh, range in Onalaska, Washington. It's a fantastic range. If you ever get a chance to come and do some training, I uh, highly recommend it. We'll get a link to their uh, their site there on, on the page. And uh, uh, Don, here you're, you're doing a couple of days of uh, scenarios-based training. Huh? So uh, uh, these are these are uh, classes where people are going to be kind of putting themselves in a position where they have to do some decision-making. Um, how important do you think that is uh, for, uh, for folks when they uh, – uh, try to incorporate uh, various uh, training regimes in their, in their defensive handgunning? Well, I think it's very important. Here's part of the problem is people go out to the range and they learn how to shoot, and they become very good shooters, very proficient with the firearm. Uh, they maybe even participate in competitions and so forth, and that makes them really good with the weapon. But then using it in a real-life situation is a very different thing than being on a range. And the difference is, the difference in the dynamics, the things that lead up to the situation. You know, when you're on a range, the thing that leads up to it is probably a whistle or a beep from a buzzer. Sure. We're not talking about uh, real life, where you see something starting to go wrong. At that point, you, you're in a dead zone almost in your thinking because you don't know what to do now. You haven't practiced what to do at this. You're just waiting for the situation to get bad enough that it's time for that whistle to go off in your head and you start using the firearm. So. The training that gets you in where you're actually engaged in a scenario and trying to solve real life type problems, uh, that helps a lot. Just one, getting your mindset in the right place so that when it does happen, you're not just emotionally stumped, not just standing there in a fog waiting for everything to happen around you. And you'll know exactly when you need to use your firearm or what your other options are besides using a firearm. Well, now I'm glad you brought up uh, real life training. Now, I know you, uh, you're a, a lifelong martial artist. Uh, and uh, you've actually incorporated that into how you approach your concealed carry lifestyle. Can you tell me a little bit about your martial arts background? Yeah, I am a, a black belt in Don's Zone style jiu-jitsu. Uh, I've also had uh, many thousands of hours of training in different types of uh, martial arts and especially the more modern uh, scenario-based type uh, martial art type training. Usually it's not called martial arts, but self-defense or those sorts of training scenarios. Um, and uh, a lot of it is incorporated, uh, you know, the concept of using scenarios is also incorporated in that because it's the same sort of situation. Uh, sort of the classic martial arts uh, brings you in and you're set up uh, just facing your partner and then you're told to perform a move, your partner gives you the setup, you perform the move, and that's it. It's almost like going to the range and shooting at a paper target. You know, there's no real dynamic entry into the scenario that, that puts you into why am I even here, why am I even um, being, if it's a grab for example, why am I being grabbed like that, what could I have done leading up to that situation to prepare myself. So uh, that that training that has the whole scenario built in around it, even when you're doing physical work or whether you're doing uh, firearms work or whatever, it really helps get you in the right mindset for what you're about to do and why you need to do it. Well, now, <clears throat> you know, I'm just kind of anticipating questions here. You know, the typical gun guy, you're ensconced in the gun culture, you're going to say, hey, you know, that's why I carry a gun. Uh, so I don't have to uh, grapple with people. I don't have to lay hands on people. I don't have to roll around in the dirt. I carry a gun. If something goes bad, I'm going to draw my gun and I'm going to perform the indicated response. Um, is that really a realistic attitude? Well, what happens is a lot of people will get the firearm thinking that is their magic talisman. It solves everything. And then they don't actually think much beyond what's going to happen with that. It's just, I've got the firearm now. I can solve any problem that comes along. <coughs> um, it's sort of like installing a sprinkler system in your house. Okay, If your house is going to burn to the ground, you've got a sprinkler system and you can put that house fire out, right? But that's a lot of money and a lot of effort to get that sprinkler system in there. And do you want that sprinkler system going off when you got just a little grease fire going on your stove? Because right. that's going to ruin your whole house, right? So you also have to have a fire extinguisher in the closet so that you can put out little fires like that. Uh, a lot of people don't, you know, like because it's they don't practice with the training scenarios and the different set of situations. They don't realize that there's a lot of situations that are solved uh, without using the firearm that are not deadly force situations. What are you going to do when you come up, for example, you're in the grocery store and a 12-year-old kid who's emotionally disturbed suddenly freaks out uh, and starts going violent?
okay? This is not something you want to shoot. You don't want to shoot a 12-year-old kid. This is somebody, I don't care, uh, you know, an adult can easily take on a 12-year-old kid if they know what the heck they're doing. But if your only resource is that firearm, you're just going to stand there and watch this emotionally kid go freak out all over the place. So that's the main thing is you got to understand not every scenario, not every situation uh, requires deadly force. It's, it's properly solved by a firearm. In fact, I'd say for the most part when we go through life, a lot fewer situations are actually at that level of force than we'll encounter with a much lower level of force. So martial arts is really important for less than lethal scenarios, um, but is there also a possibility that uh, might have to use hand-to-hand -hand skills in conjunction with your firearm? Absolutely. Uh, bad guys are fairly intelligent, okay? Uh, they're, they're not stupid. They make a living at being bad guys, right? And the guys that are stupid, they don't actually stay in the business very long. They either end up in jail or they end up dead. So most people that, you know, most bad guys that you're likely to encounter are going to have some street smarts and street wisdom about them, which means that they're not going to announce to you ahead of time that they plan to attack you. Uh, they're likely to get up close to you, they're likely to set you up so that you're distracted looking at something over here and then attack you from behind, uh, something like that. It's not like you'll get a big chance for the most part to really get into a tactical position ahead of time. And if you don't have those handgun skills, if, if for example you were to try to attack me right now and you simply grabbed my arm and held on to it, uh, I would be unable to effectively draw my firearm. Right. You know, so how do I, what do I do now? Do I wait for you to let go? Do I threaten you with my firearm? This is my drug. You know, I need to know a few techniques to be able to transition, to be able to, uh, to basically survive that initial physical assault uh, that I'm coming under, so that I can get to my gun. So it's it's um, you know it's very rarely that classic uh, you're on the range, square range mentality. The target's uh, squared up to you. And you get to do that perfect draw and that presentation. It's a lot more dynamic of a situation, is what you're saying. Correct. So, um, and I've done martial arts for a number of years. One of the things that always has impressed me with martial artists is their control of the distance to the opponent. And uh, and so, um, you know, one of the things I think a lot of people uh, miss when they do their training is, is missing that understanding that, look, the, the situation changes if the guy is seven yards out versus one yard out, right? Correct. Uh, now, um, in addition to doing training here at Firearms Academy of Seattle, in addition to bringing uh, your program up to North Point, um, you've also teamed up with Kathy Jackson at the Corner of the Cat. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, Kathy has uh, taken her show on the road. So she's now touring the company, uh, country, uh, putting on women's and co-ed classes. And she's talking about, she, she sees the need for exactly what I was talking about here, uh, being able to, uh, to handle that initial attack situation, especially for the women who are likely to be attacked um, by somebody that's bigger and stronger than them, so they're going to need to get to their firearm. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, bad guys are clever, bad guys are smart. They're not going to announce from halfway across the room, hey, I'm coming after you, better draw. You know, they get in close, they make a sudden and rapid attack. And she sees the need to basically train the women, give them that, that information they need, the knowledge they need, uh, to be able to transition and quickly get to their firearm so they can effectively defend themselves. Well, we've got the link uh, to Kathy's website here up on the screen. Uh, I highly encourage you to get an opportunity to take some training from Kathy. If you get a chance to spend some time with Don here at Firearms Academy Seattle or through the Corner Cat or through us, or uh, honestly uh, through any of the other instructors that uh, seek out Don's, uh, Don's help, it's time well, well spent. Don, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Ryan.